Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I'm really excited for this video because I've come to the home of a, uh, a real artist. Uh, I was doing, I was part of a garden tour a few weeks back and so people kept coming to our place going, have you been to the bonsai guy's house? Have you been to the bonsai guy's house? Y you guys are not gonna believe this. So yeah, my name is Miloš and I was born and raised in Czechoslovakia <laughs> and um, you know, I grew up in the mountains uh, and basically my parents, not that we had any kind of orchard or anything like that, but we always did uh, things as, as, as family. So my, my dad had apple trees and he had pear trees and every spring obviously and you know fall they needed maintenance so all you know my, my grandfather would come by and mm -hmm. right. uh, they would do things you know as pruning and, and um, right. grafting and it's pretty and detailed stuff. work from those so, things. So yeah. you know we always as a kids were running around and, and probably bugging our parents uh, mm -hmm. being always uh, you know in the way but um, yeah, I guess that's kind of how I started. My parents grew all their vegetables. We were always running outside. You know, we were always surrounded by forests. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, you know, my mom, she grows plants, you know, all sorts of flowers. And then of course, uh, I, as a, as a kid, was very artistic as well. You know, just like to draw and mm -hmm. doing things. And yeah. one day I actually did see, you know, as corny as it sounds, I, I did see the movie Karate Kid. <laughs> and right. Mr. Miyagi yeah, right. <laughs> had uh, some bonsai trees there and I was uh -huh. like, hmm, this is really cool. So yeah. I, I just went out and, you know, saw essentially bonsais that nature created and, right. you know, I brought, you know, I dug it up, brought it home, put it in the soil and sure enough, within two weeks it was dead because <laughs> I knew nothing about it, right? Right. Uh, so I got my first book, read the book and uh -huh. started. That's pretty much how it all started. You know, wow. From, from the books. Wow. And so how long have you been actively? What's your oldest tree that we're going to, uh, oldest? So obviously it depends on species, right? right. Uh, deciduous uh, trees obviously uh, uh, don't uh, take as long to develop. Right. And obviously uh, evergreens, pines, junipers usually take longer and they're obviously much older trees. Right. right. Uh, so I would say my oldest tree would be juniper. Okay. And it would be actually that one right there. It's actually one of my oldest that I owned in state as well. Wow. Um, so at the moment, it's not detailed, styled, um, right. you know, because, you know, right now the tree is essentially taking a break. Yeah. So it needs to regain its strength right. before it starts shaping it. So you can see it's, you know, have actually already pruned it once the foliage, but you can see it's got pretty strong growth at the tips. Right. Uh, so right now, all that energy is in the foliage. Okay, right? so you That's, let them rebuild themselves. You just let them just grow wild right now uh -huh. uh, to regain the strength. And in the fall, when time comes, I'm going to actually, I'll be pruning it or tr trimming the foliage, right? right? Right now, I'm developing the foliage, nothing else. Right. Uh, so I will be, um, I'll be, you know, trimming it a little bit because you know you have to realize every time you see these these species that grow much further out not only it sort of destroys overall you know appearance but it's taking energy away from the inside stuff okay so you have to balance that energy so every time i clip here take that dominant shoot from here the energy immediately you know is being distributed you know back uh, right. so that's what you want in bonsai you don't want to have these leggy shoots that they're all right. over the place not only right. it doesn't look good but it also basically you know takes that energy away from the interior stuff right. because once you start shaping it you need the interior right beautiful so, so this is actually chinese juniper juniper sergenti i don't know if i pronounced it correctly but yeah, Latin you did. yeah good enough <laughs> right there you uh, go so i see 
in this container, it looks like five trunked maple, but you're, it's actually multiple plants that have fused themselves. So obviously nature, you know, can create this by uh, various ways, but right. I'm not nature. <laughs> and I obviously, you know, know things uh, about bonsai. So the way to do it is you basically uh, create multiple trunk uh, by putting together uh, several different trunks of small trees, right? right? Right, And they fuse. Right. So, like, I can show it to you right here, right? So this one, those are basically two-year-old seedlings. You put them together, you bond them at the base. In this case, it's actually electrical tape. I don't know if you can see it. And just let it grow. All you care about, it fused. Right. right? Well, these were already a little further out, and you can see the electrical tape. But you can definitely tell that the base is fused. Yeah, right. And you can also tell that the trunks are much thicker, right? right? So these are maybe four-year-olds. Right. So, so and from, of course, from yeah. there you go to this. Right, okay, so you've spread those apart, and then back here, you've got one that you've said you've been working on about 12 years, and you're actually using wire to pull, Correct. to, to, to space them apart. Correct, yes. So Again, you're basically trying to um, separate them, so, um, this is something in, in Japanese, it's called, uh, well, I don't speak Japanese, but in English version, it's basically multiple trunk, right? right? So it should be, uh, unless it's twin trunk, but if you're doing multiple trunks, it definitely should be odd number of trunks. So right. three, five, seven, nine, okay. right? right? So in this case, it's five. Well, when we moved to this property, we had a lot of seedlings everywhere. Right. This is actually red maple. Uh -huh. So I grabbed those, put them together, and actually buried them in the ground. In the ground, trees grow much faster, develop uh, much faster. Yeah, right. So the base actually developed, and I was lucky enough, it developed beautifully. This is called Nibari, the spreading. It's right. got like the spreading of the roots down here. Right. And the trunks, you know, actually what you want to do is uh, you want to make sure you're looking at that tree and you see all those individual trunks. Right. You know, you don't line them up behind each other. That wouldn't look good. You yeah. wouldn't see the actual beauty. Right, so you've got one vertical element. So, and absolutely. Then you're, and then and you're working, the toward, working yep. towards spreading the other ones and out. And then, absolutely, you obviously can add the tension. And if you do, you will actually pull that this one a little bit further. Little by little, right. you'll essentially position it where you want it. Nice. People, folks are going to notice the uh, charcoal-looking pieces in the container. What, what is that? That's, that's just Japanese fertilizer. It's solid fertilizer, so every time I water, right. it actually you know, um, spreads mm. that, that, that fertilizer to roots. Right. I was, I was telling you before we started, we used a fertilizer called NutriCoat at the nursery, which is also a Japanese-developed fertilizer that they developed for rice paddies, so they could put it under water. You know, they're... they're they're pretty detailed. <laughs> yeah, well, Japanese know their stuff. And that's yeah. why, again, you have all these, me right. being from Europe, you know, like Europeans definitely are big on bonsai. Right. So are Americans now. Uh, right. I think America's big time, you know, catching to everybody with all these youngsters coming back from Japan, finishing their apprenticeships. Right. Uh, but uh, I personally, obviously, every person has their opinion, but I definitely like the Japanese style. Right. You know, uh, the, the, the books that they came from there and, and even being translated. I think they've been doing it long enough to figure out what really works. Right. You know, we have club here and there's always this discussion about like cost of fertilizer. I mean, fertilizer, yes. yes. Cost of soil, right? Because yeah. you're doing either you can buy pre-mixed Right. Or you can mix it yourself, but again, it's all Japanese. Right. But then everybody's like, oh, you know, you can get this, you can get permatil, you can get that from Lowe's, Home Depot, and whatnot. Yeah. But then if you have tree that's worth thousand yeah. dollars, does you know fifty dollars for actually real Japanese soil where they have it figured out? Does right. that make a difference? It doesn't. Right. It, at least not to me. So Japanese definitely figured it out, and I follow as much as I can what they what they sort of teach. Okay, so this is Japanese maple. It's supposed to be actually corked uh, bark yeah. maple. Uh -huh. I'm not 100% convinced it is, although it is showing some corking. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Japanese variety is Arakawa. You're right. Um, they're very difficult to come by. Um, it's impossible. Number one, everybody wants it and it, they don't grow that well. But right. when I got this one, I was told it is Arakawa. And it was actually air-layered. That's why it's got such a beautiful nibari. 
It's got spectacular nebari. Right. Right. Um, well, so when it was air layered, then it was grown in just, you know, plain plastic container. Again, mm -hmm. regained the strength, held to right. grow it. Right. Well, when I got it, I started developing the branch structure mm -hmm. and ramification. Uh, it's a little sunburned right now, yeah. especially the tips, but I don't really care. So this is, you know, like one way you can sort of like start the tree, you know, right. from this was air, layer. air layer. So this that, was and, air layer. And, and for folks who don't understand, that would be rooting a piece of this branch using maybe wrapping some peat moss or something around it and actually forming a separate tree on an existing tree and then Absolutely. cutting it away. It's, so that, it's, that's it's, how that one was done. Exactly. Right. Uh, it's one way you can, you know, accomplish bonsai and you essentially have pretty big, you know, right. base right away instead right. of starting with the tiny ones, you know, like twigs like this, right? This will take forever before it becomes, you know, same size. Right. Right. Although you have full control over development of a tree like this because it's like branch by branch, right? right? Well, so then you have this, right? So that's from air layering. Well, then again, in containers, these trees don't grow that fast. So for example, this tree, again, I collected that as a seedling in my yard from this Japanese maple we have back here. And I just, you know, did whatever was necessary to address the roots and, and, and whatnot and put it in ground to grow, just, just to grow, right. to actually get some size on it, right? Again, this tree was no, no bigger than my pinky, right. right? Well, so for like three, four years, I let it just grow on its own in, in the, the ground. ground. Yeah. And when it gained the size, I dug it up, put it in just training container and, and started growing it and shaping it. And slowly but surely, you know, it's developing, you know, what it is right now. Right, so you can build girth a lot faster in the ground. In the ground than you can in the pot. In the pot, it takes forever. Uh, right. it's, it's nearly impossible, right? Right. But, and then the third way, essentially, you have, it's called uh, Yamadori. It's something you go to woods uh -huh. or to somebody's yard uh -huh. that they doing a landscaping project and want to get rid of some of the trees. Uh, and they seem to be suitable for a bonsai, right? So you dig it up, you plant it again in the pot, and they start developing it, right? First, you have to make sure you keep it alive because obviously it's pretty traumatic for a tree when you dig it up out of the ground and put it in a pot. The, the size of the root ball changes dramatically. Right. So you cut all the roots a uh, certain way, certain time uh, to put it in training pot and start training it, right? Or you can do it from the woods. Usually, you you need per, you know some kind of permit depending where you're digging it from, either from the uh, landowner or you know. So, right. for example, and that's what that achieves is essentially age. You right. Know, if you do that uh, with a tree like that, you usually end up being you know like ending up with with big tree, big trunks, right? So this is American hornbeam right here. And that's exactly that story. And if you look at the base of it, the bark of it, that tells you the age, okay? So this was actually dug up at the lake, right? That tree, when I dug it up, uh, when I collected it, is, I don't know, the age might have been like 25, 30 years, something like that. And again, the age, the bark, the dead parts on the tree, you can't fake that. You can't, you know, you cannot, essentially develop it their techniques you can do it but still like trained eye look at it and say oh this is done by nature versus man right so you essentially have three ways how you can do these bonsais from a seed or yamadori well two ways you know from the seed and then of course yamadori you you collect it you collect the tree and then start training it as a bonsai so this azalea is is still got the wiring on it but you just said you've taken the wiring off a lot of them do you have to rotate it on and off you have to check it. You have to periodically check it. You know, right. like the more developed tree, you know, usually don't grow as fast. Uh -huh. So you can leave the wire on them for longer. Right. But bigger trees and, you know, like they, they grow faster. Right. And again, deciduous trees, you know, right. grow much faster. So the wire grows in much faster yeah, and gotcha. destroys and, yeah. and damages the branches. Yeah, so that's what so. we're talking about is he's using the wire to create the basic shape. But if he leaves it on there, it's a tree is growing. Uh, it's going to damage it. It's going to leave marks. It's going to leave scars that you can't really, you know, correct. You usually have to cut it and then regrow it. 
uh, that's that's which right. with again with deciduous trees it's not that big of a deal but with uh, for example pines mm. again it is a big deal because if you scar it you don't regrow you know branch like you can do with deciduous tree uh, right. now on the other hand this uh, evergreens actually they're growing much slower so you can leave that wire on it longer and the idea behind putting the wire on it you bind it and essentially the uh, the live tissue mm -hmm. uh, gambium right is distributing all the uh, all the uh, nutrients and of course the uh, uh, the growth sort of over a period of time sets that's what that wire does it sets it in place and when you take that wire off uh, I would say about 85 percent the shape actually stays the same you know right. I mean a tree has a general idea that it goes after light right after sunlight You're right so once you remove the the wire eventually if you leave it long enough it will go and and grow uh, you know straight up right but if you periodically correct that growth the direction of it with the mm -hmm. wire the tree will essentially set and stays there right. and then again you just concern about the foliage Right. In this case, this is Satsuki Azalea. You can still see some flower buds. Right. Um, so this is a traditional Japanese yeah, dwarf very azalea. Much so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and their Japanese azalea or azaleas period are really valued for that blossom, right. for, for that bloom. And it, it's just spectacular, as everybody knows, you know, who's got azalea at their yard. Right. When they bloom, it's just, it's just beautiful. And you don't see green, yeah. you just see the color of the blossom. Right. And in this case, you've got art that becomes a, a, you know, covered in flowers. And like this, this right. is definitely a tree that's in, you know, again, Japanese pot. Um, it is got nice, it does have nice uh, nibari, the base, mm -hmm. a branch structure and ramification. This tree, this is, this is nice tree. Yeah. Um, and again, the idea is essentially create something that you might find in nature, but it looks pretty magnificent. Such a small tree, if you look at it, it's tiny, but if you really look at it, I think it looks magnificent. This was a seedling of your Japanese maple. Was this Japanese maple already on the property when you moved in? Yes. So you, you've been the beneficiary of the seedlings? When we bought the property, it. it was so overgrown, everything. Right. But we did, yes, there were like... I'm not gonna. I'm not exaggerating. Hundreds, oh. if not thousands, of seedlings. Right. Yeah. To clear it out, to make a space. Uh -huh. You know, I just didn't have heart to throw it away. So right. anything and everything, yeah. I saved, grew it in the ground for a period of time, and yeah. this is result of of that work. Not everything turns in something good, but this one, my favorite trees are the ones that they actually look good. They have all the right you know, uh, pedigree essentially, <laughs> uh, the shape, and I made them. You know, I can always go and buy a good tree, but right. this is something I made and I know it is a good tree. So it's Japanese maple. I started it from a seedling when I dug it up. It's got, it's still in development, but it's got good nibari. Yeah. It's got great movement of the trunk. So yeah. this would be considered informal upright. Yes. Formal upright is perfectly straight, right. but this does have curvature. Right. And it does narrow down toward the top. It's got branches, alternating branches, padding almost perfectly where they're supposed to be. If you open Japanese, you know, or even American book on, on bonsais and look up in informal upright, uh -huh. uh, this is pretty much what you're going to find. So unless right. I really majorly mess up, yeah, right. one day this tree right. is going to be, you know, right. great. And you, um, and, you, and you pulled all these limbs down horizontal. And that's, that's another thing about this tree. Yes, over time I've been bending them and they are pretty much set. Yeah. And they stay there. This tree is, you know, liking it. Whatever, whatever I did, I did it right. Or <laughs> right, there's right. like some chemistry between the tree and me uh -huh. that it is in fairly nice spot. You know, it does actually right. have one branch on the bottom here grafted that I grafted there. Oh, wow. I felt like it was missing there, but you uh -huh. know, as a tree develops, maybe I'm not wow. gonna be, you know, like keeping it there. I don't know yet, but right now I like it there. So yeah, yeah. So if you look at that tree. Uh, you know, it it does need to uh, definitely. I have to work on ramification. It it's gonna spurs. What do you mean ramification? Uh, leaves. Okay, there's not gotcha, enough. Yeah. There's okay. not enough leaves. I need to twig it. You know, if you look at any of these trees, basically the idea is like you splitting it. 
yeah. to twos. Because yeah. every time you make a cut, usually what he wants to right. do goes in threes, fours, fives, right? Yeah. So what you do everywhere you look, everything splits oh, you to twos. twos. I see it, it all all you basically allowing is two. So you have two. And that one, that end splits in twos again. And yes. each and there's basically more twos you have the more full the tree is. So the coverage, right. the foliage, is not gonna look as bare as it does right now. Gotcha. So in about five years, again, this tree is gonna be showpiece. So where are you getting your containers? Are they Club, uh, I mean, there are suppliers, you know, it's uh, not, there's, there's a guy in uh, Maryland uh -huh. who's got very good selection of imported mm -hmm. Japanese and Chinese pots. He also has antique, right antique pots uh, but again the club that we have here um, mm -mm. you know again like somebody's trash is other man's treasure so <laughs> right. kinda gotcha. how, how that works gotcha. You gotcha. Know? Gotcha. Uh, and you know you can buy them online you know uh, there's there's you right. know eBay Right. Um, so this is a north, uh, uh, like a central North Carolina club or Raleigh club. It's or it's, it's a Raleigh club. It's called okay. TBS Triangle Bonsai Society. Okay. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's one of the best actually bonsai clubs in I would say on East Coast. I mean, right. it's only my opinion, but right. the club's been around. It has some great artists there. Uh -huh. uh, we invite a ton of you know world known artists. Wow. Um, and. They bring, you know, stuff meaning like knowledge that, that we don't have. And, you know, when you talk to somebody who did apprenticeship in Japan or when you see them work, they usually do demo tree. Right. It gives you the confidence. It gives you the ideas for your trees. Um, and, you know, it, it makes it possible. You know, you, you feel it, you look at it and be like, oh, you know what, I think I can do this. So this is a uh, Japanese black pine. Yeah. It was, as you can see here, grown from a seed. I did not grow it from a seed. Uh, a gentleman named uh, Julian Adams in uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I call him this unsung hero of American bonsai. I think he, from nothing, had developed spectacular trees. Absolutely spectacular. And I've been going there for the last, I don't know, 15 years. Uh -huh. I've known him at least for 15 years. And every time I bring something small and work on it myself. So, you know, he grew it from a seed for about three, four years, put the major, you know, bends on it or whatever. And now I have it and I'm developing it. Foliage again, the uh, uh, overall appearance. And you can see, you can have big tree, you can have small tree, right? Yeah. Uh, there's still plenty to look at and look at the difference in the size, right? It is in a very nice pot, also it Japanese. Is. It's called, it, well, the, the, um, the pot, pot, I don't know if he really made it, but I guess the kiln is big A, mm -hmm. all right? Very sought after. Um, you can look at the tree. It's got, you know, beautiful curve in there. Again, uh, in this case, you really can't see the nibari, but the branch structure, pretty much everything is there. Yeah. Now, next thing is really um, making sure that I will reduce size of the needles. Right. And the way to do that is, again, basically it's, it's you are redistributing the energy. Most of these trees, deciduous or evergreens, they're apically dominant. So all the energy goes to the apex, right? Yeah, right. So what you do, and you can see it up here, when in spring it starts, you know, producing candles, you cut those candles out and what you achieve is immediately you get two. What I was talking about earlier about the Japanese maple, yeah. it's same thing, ramification, you're splitting right. it in twos and that's what you have right With here. smaller needles. With smaller needles. Right. And the same thing I'll be, you know, doing here. So it's a process. It takes time. But again, trees like this, the older I get, the more trees like this I have to have because some of my trees are very heavy to move them around. It's impossible. I mean, it has issues, but look at it. it the health wise, it's perfect. It's filling up nicely. Yeah. Right. Doesn't have best of nabaris. That's also a Japanese black pine. Right. But for a very inexpensive tree, this is a tree that any beginner you know, could learn a lot on. Uh, in this case, again, it does not have a speck of disease on it. 
which yeah. you have to obviously spray trees yeah. for disease, for uh, fungus, for right. insect. The, the stress that you're adding to these trees is definitely inviting pests. Correct, correct. correct. Right. And down here in North Carolina, right. the humidity, uh, I would say in my case at the very least, it's more issue of diseases than insect. Right. It's more the fungus that I have to fight right. than actually insect. Yeah. Insect, usually you can catch it in the spring because they like that fresh new growth on maples. Right. And you can spot it pretty quickly. You spray it mm -hmm. like neem oil, something fairly, you know, um, organic. Organic, well, yeah. exactly. Or and, organic, uh, yeah. and, and, and you get rid of it. Yeah. With, with any kind of disease, you know, like you never know, is it because it got too much of water? Is it because it didn't have enough water? Is it some, you know, let's say with, with um, pines, it could be needle cast, which, you know, by now I can spot, but on deciduous trees, it could have all sorts of, of you know, fungal diseases, right. which you get sometimes, spider mites sometimes, as well. spider mites, yeah, I mean, you can mm -hmm. find those and you can treat it, right. but the, Actual diseases, it's always, always issue. Basically, as far as the soil goes for these trees, they need moisture, but you can't water clot them, okay? Right. If you over water it, you, tr you kill that tree faster than anything. So that's why for bone size, and again, earlier I was talking about Japanese having it figured out. There's this huge, huge discussion about what trees like, what they need. And yes, it's a little bit different for deciduous uh, and uh, evergreens, right? But the main three components for any soil is something that's called akadama. It's all Japanese. Mm. I use Japanese import. So right. it's called akadama, which in translation I was told it means red clay. It's right. volcanic. And, and that's going to have a mineral content, which is, you know, important. It's, yeah. it's somewhat acidic. Uh -huh, it's somewhat right. acidic. Right. Um, then it does have uh, lava rock, mm. black one, mm. right? You can have red one. Sometimes you can buy a red one here and you can mix it. Uh -huh. And then you can have, and this is pumice. So it's a mixture of these three. So lava is very coarse and very sharp, right? So it basically, every time root hits it, the root splits. That's what you want. You want like fine fibrous roots. So that's what lava does. It barely holds any moisture in it, right? right. It's there really for splitting the roots. Mm -hmm. uh, and then pumice, same thing. It doesn't hold, I mean, you can see it right now. Uh, this is pumice, the lighter one, that's pumice. Uh, this is lava, and this is the akadama. The akadama is dark brown, and that's what essentially hold. It will hold enough moisture uh -huh. to keep the tree growing, but any excess moisture just goes straight through the pot. I can show right. it to you when I water it. Yeah, okay. yeah. You know how the excess just drains right out. Right. If you put any organic matter in it, like soil or you know what you can buy um, at Lowe's again here, like you mm. see people they buying these tuya trees and maples and putting it in pots and buying like a potting container mm. uh, soil and all those trees are dying that's because it cannot grow in it this is mixed uh, basically uh, three parts equal parts so it's uh, basically one 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 okay gotcha and you can tell by the coloration that this one's moist correct yeah you, mm -hmm. it's a little bit darker in the, in the, in yep. the color how else on a 90 degree day like today how many times are you watering well, you have to water. You have to watch it, but more likely it's going to be twice a day. Twice early a day. Early in the morning. Okay, right. Um, and then, you know, five-ish, six-ish, you mm. want to be sure you don't put too much of moisture on leaves, not to burn leaves, right? right? Before, when the sun is right. hitting it, it's just... Before we show you watering, um, how are you going on vacation? How are you going vacation if you're, if you're, you know, if so you need something easily watered twice it a took, day? It took a while to find somebody responsible and uh -huh. somebody you know, um, caring mm -hmm. enough to right. do a good job. And I found across the street, kid, his name is Graham. He is great. <laughs> yeah, right. As long as he wants the job, he has the job. <laughs> nice. He's uh, actually checking. 
Oh, he's oh not watering because it's, he, it's 2 o'clock. He's watering because he, it needs he, it. He will even come here during the day uh -huh. just to check on trees. So Wow, that's great that you were able to Lucky enough find. to have somebody like that. Yes, absolutely. R right, yeah. I had the same problem at the, nur at the nursery. A lot of folks want to water. They're so scared of damaging it, they overdo. They, they, you know, they, yeah, yeah they're, they're scared that they're ruining something and they're ruining it. <laughs> Again, what I know from these, right. I, you know, friend of mine who did uh, completed the uh, apprenticeship in Japan, he says the first year they won't even allow you to water. Wow. You just observe. And he yeah. said, you are there seven days a week. You are there for 10, 12 hours a day uh -huh. and they will not even allow you to water. You watch. You watch somebody who is yeah. above you, who knows more. Uh -huh. That's how you do it. And you watch the trees. You learn it from, from the trees. Spring, summer, fall, everything changes. So you look, you watch, and you learn. Right. So. Well, let's water a few and okay. see how this water just floods out of here. So this one obviously doesn't need any. Mm -hmm. So how about I'll bring this one. Okay. Oh, that's the forest. <laughs> right. How many individual trees is? I think 17. 17. I got and these are of, seedlings from? These were seedlings. These were all, not even, not even that. They were like a year seedlings. I grew uh -huh. them for years in pots. Right. Uh, before I put this, this, this spring, I put it, you know, uh, together. Mm -hmm. And you can tell, I mean, it does have it's some a, water. Yeah. You but can see the drier. Darker, darker area there, lighter area there. But also I want this tree to grow. I want it to grow like crazy, and right. it's also a trident maple. They don't seem to mind water at all. You right. can pour a bucket of it in it, and they don't mind it. Especially, I mean, it's been freshly potted, so it's not that root clog. Uh, so here, I'll show you, you know, how you water it. So you make sure, obviously, that you, um, it's not hot, because a lot of times you have hot water in the house, so you make sure it's not yeah. hot, so you don't boil your trees. Well, and then you just go. And since it is in the evening, I'll stay away from watering the leaves because again, if the water sits on the leaves whole evening, right. what happens is like, again, you're inviting disease, you're inviting some kind of fungus. And it just pours right through it, doesn't it? Yep. So I'll make sure I give it plenty of water. And I mean, look at it. All the yeah. stuff that that tree doesn't need goes right through because that soil is so porous. Right. There's no organic matter. Nothing will hold that moisture. It will only need or hold what, what that tree really needs. So this area, uh, back in the back, Milos has his uh, nursery, basically, where all of his, uh, a lot of his pre-bonsai work uh, goes on, where he's putting some, putting some growth on these plants early on, some seedlings, some rooted cuttings, uh, some things he sells and donates to other folks that are involved in it uh, as well. It's a Japanese maple Kotohime variety. How long have you been working with that one? I actually, believe it or not, that also came from uh, Julian Adams. Oh, really? Probably 15 years. I've been, okay. I've, wow. been, I've been working on it easily 15 years. Right. I won't make you pick up another one, but when you, when you watered, there were seven holes in that other container. Correct. So that's where you yep. see that water rolling out of the bottom of that thing. These yep. are it's not only a well-drained mix, these containers also have holes in the bottom of them that are fairly substantial, actually. To yep, yep. All the excessive water has to go. Right. It can't stay in there. This is actually willow-leafed uh, ficus. Okay. So it's the only tropical tree I have. Okay. I don't like tropicals because you have to take them in, even here in North Carolina. When winter comes, you have to protect them. Anything below 50 degrees, you have to protect it. Right. Otherwise, they will lose the leaves. Uh, damage, damage, damage. Right. Okay, so this is a tree with a story though, and I, and I love plants with a story. I have, in our thing at the house now is I really, we're on such a small lot, I want the plants to have a story. You know, I got it from this person, I got it from that person. So again, this tree I got it from our club, TBS, gentleman, Tom Waldo, uh -huh. brought it for sale. Right. It was very inexpensive, and he was selling his trees, mm -hmm. some of his trees, I'm sure, they were like his babies when yes. he was giving them up. But he always liked the fact that somebody from a club bought it. Right. And I did buy it. I bought it in 2006, I believe. I mean, I keep records of all this, so mm. I have it. And Tom was fairly 
um, elderly gentleman at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult for him to keep up with his trees. And I know exactly what that is like now. <laughs> Although I'm still much younger than he was when he sold it. Yeah. Um, and this is probably the only surviving tree from his collection because wow. toward the end of his life, um, he lost his house to fire. Uh, and even his collection basically got damaged. And shortly after that, Tom actually passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have that tree. And not only that, that tree actually one time, I did leave it here when winter hit. Uh -huh. And it did die, sort of, yeah. but then started growing back up. So I saved it, right? Yeah. Then, uh, I want to say two years now, um, when the construction was going on next to us, the uh, contractor actually dropped one of the trees on our property and completely stripped all the branches Whoa, of no this way. tree. So what you see here again is basically <laughs> amazing story of a tree survivor, true survivor, tree survivor, yeah. you know, however you want to take it, yeah. uh, that keeps coming back. It does have the typical, um, you know, big ficus-like base. You yeah. see these trees in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and it just keeps pushing, you know, like I haven't wired much. I haven't done much except some pruning, kind of like strategically, again, like where I need the branches. Right. But it's going strong. Wow, that's amazing. That's um, amazing. So, so, well, thank you very much for having us, for having us over. Uh, this is, really is an amazing collection. And the bonsai guy is, is apparently, <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. I kept, like I say, I kept hearing that all day. Have you been to the bonsai guy's house? So, okay, well, yeah, so. people, people have no idea. Right, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know what, yeah. I don't really care that much. This is, I, I, I love this. I love it. This yeah. is a hobby that I, can, I have for the rest of my life. Awesome. And hopefully one of my daughters can, you know, uh, continue. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you very much, Milos. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.